everybody. Welcome to DevOps Dialogues. We're glad that you've joined us today. You know, we talk a lot about uh, different topics around software, whether it's in the core or at the edge and combination of hardware and infrastructure. And we're kind of having that conversation today. I'm joined by Bruce Kornfell, who is Chief Product Officer with Store Magic. Good to be talking with you, Bruce. Thanks, Mitch. Appreciate you having me on. You bet. Um, give us a little window into what Store Magic does. I can imagine what your role is as a Chief Product Officer. Yeah, so at Store Magic, we're all about helping our customers um, run applications and store data at their small sites. That's usually enterprise edge, the edge of the enterprise, it's IoT, it's small business, medium business, but anywhere outside of the cloud, outside of a data center where they just need to run applications and store data reliably. And that's that's pretty much what we do. Very nice, very very much a growing part of the edge, if you will, so much more moving to it. For sure, there just seems to be a lot of activity and chatter and movement in that space. And I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into that at some point here today. Well, yeah, let, let's kind of go right with it. So love to talk with you a little bit about some of the marketing or market changing conditions. You know, one of the things that certainly got a lot of attention is what's happened around Broadcom's acquisition of VMware, pricing and restructuring of products. That's uh, raised some costs for, for some companies, some users, causing them to look at other alternatives. Another factor might be just, as we were talking about, the technology has really come a long way and uh, the networking and really being able to deliver capabilities at the edge. What's your perspective on that? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I'd say there's two big market things going on right now. One of them is what you mentioned, uh, Broadcom, and the other one I would say is, I'm not sure the exact way to put it, but it has to do with cloud, right? So it's it's there's a, been a massive focus on running applications and storing data in cloud over the last 10, 20 years. And we're seeing a lot of activity around rethinking that strategy. But to go back to your first point about Broadcom, yeah, it's uh, it's been quite the last 12 months. It's been about a year since Broadcom announced the details of what they did with the VMware product line. And I'll just say it's thrown the whole industry um, in an uproar. Um, I sometimes use the word chaos because it has been quite chaotic. And I'm sure that Broadcom had some very smart financial people making these decisions and financially, they're probably right. They probably did a really good job. They have some happy customers that are the big ones. Their stock price is up over the last year significantly. So they, from a financial perspective, they made some good decisions. With that, there's a section of the market that are large companies that have lots of small sites, robo, remote office, branch office, edge, whatever term you wanna use. And there's small and medium enterprises that that are not part of that happiness um, because their prices have gone up significantly and they've been forced to buy bundles of products and features that they don't need. And there's a lot of frustration out there. So, yeah, that's a that's a big one right now for us. We're, we have a lot of end users that are asking us, how can you help us migrate um, from a VMware environment to something else? And that's that's been a big piece of what's what's been going on and driving our roadmap. See a lot of uh, product introductions kind of centered around that that happening, whether it's app modernization or moving moving to the edge. Lots of interesting things. Well, talk about some of the edge use cases for SMB enterprise organizations. You mentioned Robo; that's a clear one. I can think back to my uh, my banking days with branch banking, and, and yeah. uh, you know pushing that out to the edge as well. But that's just one scenario. Yeah, so I'd say there's lots of them. I mean, there's lots of them. And I would say um, the least common denominator across all of these that I'm going to talk about on these use cases is that they require um, uptime, they require performance, and they re they don't have a lot of IT resource. So they, But they've made a decision that a set of applications cannot be run in the cloud. And we can have that conversation as well, but they've made an architectural decision that says, I need on site. It's a small site. I don't have IT staff. I need to run applications here. And typically what we see is they're running everything on a couple of servers as low cost as they can get it. So they're running all of their local applications. Of course, there's cloud connection. They're sending data to, to the cloud. Everyone does it slightly differently. They're either sending data to a cloud or a data center, but 
running of applications, storing data, decision making is happening locally for lots of reasons. So use cases we see um, clearly um, retail is a big one that we see a lot of. There's a lot of retailers out there that have hundreds and thousands of sites. Um, so, you know, retail is a big vertical for us where they run all of their applications. They're running point of sale, inventory management, customer experience, um, their kitchen management systems for ticketing. Everything runs locally because they just can't depend on the cloud to run all of that. So retail is a big one that we see a lot of this activity. On the other end of the spectrum, there's medium enterprises and small enterprises. Maybe they have one location. It's a small business. And you know these small businesses don't do this on their own. Typically, they have a VAR, they have an integrator that helps them, but they need to run applications locally um, in one fell swoop. And to your point about technology, um, the performance and availability of, of hardware has significantly improved in the last five, 10 years. So now for a small amount of money, let's just call it $10,000, a company can buy some hardware and some software and they can run their applications locally. It's not a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars anymore. The technology is so powerful that they can run everything locally for, for a little bit of money and not, not require a lot of IT people on site to manage it. So we run the gamut between large enterprise that have lots of sites, small business, healthcare is another one. We see a lot of opportunity, a lot of customers in that space mm -hmm. that are running health, their providers, their hospitals, their clinics that can't depend on the cloud for performance, usually latency and for data security sometimes. So a lot of healthcare providers are also deploying what we call an edge computing solution. Yeah, no, there's been a real gap in between the, I need a, I can put a Windows server out at the edge and kind of live with that and whatever limitations and spending a lot of money on a lot of infrastructure. Um, and it seems that that gaps have been filled by this, what the, we term hyper converged infrastructure, which right. is really taking a lot of those capabilities that we think in, in you know larger data centers, but packaging that into to smaller offerings that can live at the edge. Yeah, exactly. The days of needing um, like an IT architect to figure out, okay, I need a couple servers. I need an external SAN. What am I doing for networking? And they're building this three-tiered architecture. Awesome for the data center. Awesome for the cloud when you have massive scalability needs. But if you're at a small edge site, you really want as little kit as possible. And that's where this hyper-converged notion comes in. On in, a, in one physical server, you can virtualize servers with, with a hypervisor, you can virtualize storage, you can virtualize networking, and it's all in one box. And that and that's mm. the the innovation that's happened over the last whatever it is, five, 10 years. And it's it's a big driver of what can be done um, at the edge. Really a combination of hardware, virtualization as you were talking about, and of course right. the kind of kind of technical services that you need to support applications at the edge. You all have come out with uh, the store magic SVHCI. Uh, product here recently, I guess in kind of mid uh, 2024. Talk about right. your approach to solving this problem. Yeah, so this yeah, this really came about, StoreMagic's been around for over 15 years. We have thousands of customers around the globe that absolutely, absolutely love our tech. And what it's been over the last 15 years, it's been at the storage layer for virtualization. So we've been selling a product called SV SAN for like 15 years. It works with other people's hypervisors, primarily VMware. They've been the market leader, but also with Microsoft Hyper-V. So customers all these years have been like, I've made a, I've made a hypervisor decision, I'm a VMware shop, but VMware vSAN is really expensive. How can StoreMagic help? So we come in, we say, forget vSAN, use our product instead. And our customers are very, very happy because they can build a two node physical, two node servers. We have this concept of a remote witness that does the three node quorum. So we do have a third node. It just happens to be a lightweight piece of software that runs in the cloud or in a data center. So we save customers a lot of money on hardware. They only need two servers, whereas vSAN typically needed three. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, Broadcom, last November, it was around, it was around this you know, late November, early December last year. All of these changes became obvious to everybody. And then all of a sudden, we saw the opportunity to get in the game of having a full stack 
hyperconverged solution with our own hypervisor. And that's where we kind of we focused our dev team on it. We've had skunk work projects in the past building our own hypervisor. We never brought it to market because of the gorillas that were out there. We figured it'd be hard to compete, but Broadcom pretty much handed us this gift and said, well, the market, the market's up for grabs. So, you know, so here we are. SVHCI is a full stack solution with a hypervisor. And these days, um, you don't have to invent a hypervisor anymore. They're out there in the open source world. So we are using a KVM product that is used in millions and millions of installations. We've taken KVM, we've built a hypervisor using our 15 years of store, virtual storage knowledge and tech, we've built this full stack solution. So now our customers that are asking for us to help them on their journey away from VMware because of the significant price increases, we now have a solution and that's what SVHCI was designed to do. And like you said, we, we launched it about six months ago over the summer and, and just recently um, we've brought out version two of that product as well. You know, folks that may be uh, moving off of VMware, it may not be a hundred percent move. You, know, you aren't always in a position to be able to do that, right? Some things are easier to migrate off of a platform than others might be. Is it possible to coexist in a kind of VMware plus you know, SVHCI world? How, how is the scenario like that work? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. So I would say for the smaller enterprises, for the smaller organizations that have a single site or two sites, in those situations, it would be a switch. It would be, all right, I'm done with VMware. I need a new solution. What we've done um, is we've made our user interface and the way that we manage, we've made it um, a similar feel to what they're used to with VMware. Think about it. There's engineers have come out of school over the last 20 years. They're trained to, to know how to use VMware. So we're not stupid. We're smart and said, you know what? If they're used to the workflow of VMware, let's make our UI familiar. So when our solution gets installed, it gets installed as one stack and all of it gets installed in about an hour. You can go from bare metal to having a full stack hypervisor, virtual networking storage up and running in about an hour. And that's unheard of in the VMware um, scenario. You have to install vSphere or ESXi, you have to install virtual networking, you have to install vSAN, and you're talking about a day's worth of work or more, we've got that down to about an hour. And then those customers that are small, they have, yes, yeah, so a little bit of a learning curve, but they don't have to go to a week long training on how to use our UIs, very simple. So in those cases, it's a, it's a full switch, but to your point, for the larger enterprises, that they may choose to stay with VMware in their data center for good reason. It's a, it's a great product. vSphere and vSAN, VMware's products, are great for the data center. They're scalable, they're high performant, they've got lots of management tools available. But to roll that out at the small sites is just cost prohibitive. So the way those customers would do it is they would have the same management capability that they've had in the data center, and their IT team would need to use the store magic tools to install and manage our hypervisor and our full stack, but they can absolutely play together. And we have plenty of customers that are either doing this today or we're in proof of concepts with them to do it in the near future. So yeah, there is there would be two slightly different UIs, but from an enterprise management perspective, they could be managed holistically. Keeping the workflow very similar between the two environments, given that Yeah, listen, I hate to say it, these days it's almost like a VM is a VM is a VM. I mean, yes, VMware's virtual machine is slightly different than a KVM. Um, you know, as as I think you know, Mitch, there's also we've we've built tools to help customers take their existing virtual machines from a VMware environment do the necessary conversion and import it into ours. It's not a seamless migration. You can't just say down a server and move a VMware VM into ours instantly. It takes a little bit of converting, but we make it e you know, as easy as possible for them to do that. Very nice. Well, it's uh, fascinating talking with you about it. It's always fun to talk about it's a little bit of hardware and some software and, and some distributed computing yeah. at the edge. Um, so folks want to come visit the store magic site website i guess it's dot com right store magic.com what kind of information or help can they get from you to learn more 
Yeah, so I would say clearly um, take a look at storemagic.com. Everything you'll need is there. I'll just point out a couple of things um, that might be interesting. One is uh, there is a VMware savings calculator that you'll find on there. Uh, we spent a lot of time building it with accurate pricing information. So we're very, StoreMagic you'll find is very upfront about pricing, very um, open about it. A single node SVHCI solution uh, for the software stack, including hypervisor, virtual networking, and two terabytes of storage. That's our starting price point for storage. All of that stack is about $2,000 US list price. I think it's 2,050, something like that. So we're very transparent on our pricing. This VMware savings calculator will allow you to go through and pick your exact scenario that you're thinking of, how many nodes, how many servers, et cetera. And we'll do a real comparison for our pricing versus VMware's as well as energy savings. So you'll see that. Mm -hmm. So that's one area that I'll, that I'll direct you to on our website. And the other one is um, just recently we launched SVHCI version two. So I encourage you to pop on our website and look around, but some of the new things that are coming that we just announced is like snapshots, um, integration with our centralized manager, our fleet manager. So now all of your nodes of SVHCI can be managed from a single pane of glass. And we also announced this VM import capability where, we'll, where we're gonna help you automate the process of bringing a VMware VM into the StoreMagic SVHCI world. So I would say those are the two, the two areas that, are, that, that I would encourage you to take a look at. Very helpful. Sounds like a lot of good resources there to check things out and do a little self-service checking out with the calculator too yeah. and kind of seeing what might work for exactly. potential customers. Well, Bruce, it's been great talking with you. Appreciate you uh, coming on to DevOps Dialogues and exploring HCI and what's happening in that world as well as uh, solving issues around the computing and storage and networking at the edge and maybe help that with a little bit of VMware transformation problem at the same time. Thanks, Mitch. I appreciate you having me. Looking forward to doing it again sometime. Love to do it. Thanks again. And thanks to everybody for joining us today on DevOps Dialogues.